Okay, just a moment. Did, did we fix the audio bug as well? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I mean, Bernie's going to be around checking it. Yes. <laughs> okay, now it should be working, I think. Oh, yeah. I, I see us yeah. now. We are live. Okay. <laughs> so I hope that also the audio is working this time. Okay, then uh, oh. again, hello to you guys. Uh, thank you very much for, mm. for joining us again. Uh, unfortunately, we had to uh, skip uh, the full moon this time. So we are just doing an astro session. Uh, there were some uh, issues and we hadn't enough time to, to do it around the full moon. But we will come back to the schedule uh, as soon as possible. So maybe we skip one or we add uh, one session in between to be uh, right on uh, the full moon again. But I think there's also no problem right now because the uh, sky is just so bright uh, until uh, 10, 10 uh, p.m. So no problem for you all to, to uh, yeah, watch us. Okay. So um, what yeah, hello. What are the points for for tonight's session? I just want to briefly uh, give a give a little list what what we are talking about today. Um, uh, the first thing, of course, is uh, the solar eclipse that will happen in three days from now on, or four days. Um, a partial or annual solar eclipse. Uh, we can talk a bit more about this. Um, I think there's no real solar photographer here in the round, but uh, yeah. We are, of course, we are astrophotographers, so we can <laughs> have an opinion on that and give, can uh, give some tips. And maybe I also prepared some photos of recent solar eclipses to, to show you what you can expect. And the more important thing is we have a guest tonight. And th this is Robert from Austria, also known as Stardust Astro. And he will uh, talk a bit more in detail about his astrophotography and will also share some photos of his work and we got already a little sneak preview and it was really cool to see so uh, be curious for that that would be really cool and yeah we will show some photos that we were able to took over the last yeah last months there's not so much because you all know the weather was not that perfect for us to photography especially in europe sorry Ivan. <laughs> maybe you can show some more and we also do again a giveaway. We give away again uh, vouchers for the telescope service uh, online shop. So you can easily participate and getting one by adding the hashtag giveaway, which I'm, uh, I will left this uh, text here, hashtag giveaway in the YouTube comment box. Then you automatically participating in the, in the raffle we do in the end of the video. And there's also a 50 euro voucher that we give away by asking a question and the first correct answer will win 50 euros. Super cool, I think. So this will happen somewhere in between our, our little talk here. Okay, I think we uh, saved the solar eclipse for, for later because uh, I'm pretty sure that Robert is, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> can't wait, <laughs> can't wait to take over the screen. So um, yeah, Robert, please feel free to uh, to uh, uh, say something about yourself and yeah. Okay, yeah, well, hi, I'm Robert. I'm from Austria, Frankfurt, you know, to say, to be precise. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm doing astrophotography for a year now, for like a year and three months. No, wait, it's longer. It's for one and a half years now. It's June. Um, yeah. I can show you some pictures. Should I share my screen? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Give us an idea of your equipment, uh, Robert. Oh, yes. Um, oh, yeah. We saw photos. Of course. Um, what are you using? I, I'm i using a 80 millimeter um, telescope as a TS Optics um, refractor, a duplet. And actually, and right now, a uh, two 
ASI071 MC Pro. Okay. For capturing my photos. Um, I'm in a bottle four. Uh, I'm in a bottle four, and I'm not using any filter filters at all. Um, just a UV IR cut, and no light pollution filters. Um, because I, yeah, I figured out I don't need to use filters actually. People okay. ask me a lot of times what sh what filter should I buy if you're in a bottle four like. No one, nothing. <laughs> it's fine shooting without filters, in my opinion, at least, and experience. Um, yeah, I I don't have a proper mount yet. I'm using a Q5, or it's more like a Pressa Exos 2, on my own pier in my garden, in my backyard. And my pier is a chopped down tree <laughs> and some... <laughs> threaded rods. <laughs> I can show some that pictures. Was cycling, right? Oh yeah, we want mm -hmm. to see this. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, actually. Um, yeah, I can show you some stuff if I figure out how to share my screen again. Is is your peer growing by the year? <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> is your peer growing by the year? <laughs> the tree is growing. My peer is actually still living. It, it <laughs> grows some some branches. And stuff and new leaves. It's it's crazy. It's chopped down for, for like people, three man. years now. But then you have to uh, always do new pole alignment. Uh it's. <laughs> well, it's stable, stable yet, enough. It's not that bad now, but okay. it was uh, pretty bad in March, April when it was still freezing and yeah. the floor is yeah. uh, the ground is moving. Sure, yeah, yeah. Then I had to do pole alignment like every. <laughs> I think it would be best. It would have been best to do it every three hours <laughs> or so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it worked uh, over the night. It's pretty stable. It's it's great. I like it. Um. Yeah. Let's share my screen. So, yeah, I think you want to see my tree pot first, right? <laughs> let's start yeah. this. Yeah, let's see the gear. I just show you my gear. Um, just look for it a second. I've built my own website. Uh, it's an ongoing project. It's not done yet. But I'm onto it every time I have time. And that's <laughs> the tree pot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I never saw this before. <laughs> <laughs> it fits um, the AVX and mm. theoretically it should fit an EQ6 and the smaller EQ5, EQ3 mounts. And this is my AVX mounted on it. Mm. The AVX looks massive on the, the beautiful tree. And uh, but I sold the AVX. It wasn't that great for photography. I always got egg-shaped stars because it has it had really bad declination backlash, and I couldn't get it under control. And that's my Exos Two with a belt mod from Astro Gadget. Yeah, you got works. a shelf going on as well, right? So you you put in a shelf so you can have accessories and stuff. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. It's it's practical. It's just built. I built it from stuff I had laying around, and it works. Is it from the other part of the tree that you cut down? <laughs> <laughs> ah, sadly not. No, the part I cut down, uh, I threw it in the campfire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. You part. have incredible cable management. <laughs> oh yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, enough with that. Yeah, well, um, what have I to tell you? I started with photography back when I was a kid, basically. I got a camera and I took photos. 2016, I bought my first camera, a Sony A6000. It's actually filming right now. I still have it and use it. It's a great cam for starters. Um, and this is my first Milky Way shot. I didn't know what I was doing. 
I just, yeah, I didn't even have a tripod back then. I just put the camera on a on a fence and captured some photos and figured out how it works. Um, yeah, that's one from the same year. I played around with HDR in Photoshop and stuff and Photoshop was a little bit tough to learn back then. I didn't know much of YouTube and tutorials and, and stuff. I figured most out by myself. Um, and I had absolutely no clue what I was doing. Like I really, I Photoshopped in color gradients. The thing you want to avoid, absolutely avoid. I just Photoshopped in purple and blue and green. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's your vision. It, it, it's your vision, Robert. Yeah, so if you want gradients in there, let there be gradients. It's it's what you in Photoshop that matters, right? Yeah, it's, uh, so. but it's I literally put them in there. It's a little crazy if I look at it right now. <laughs> yeah, and I did some Milky Way, and this image is the first one where I really where I realized there is more stuff in there, like Andromeda. And I didn't even know this was Andromeda back mm. then. I didn't know it. And I just saw it in there and <laughs> pushed it a little bit to get it visible, to make it visible. And yeah, I slowly but surely figured out how this all works. This was 2019 on a mountain nearby. This is. Um, aircraft what's what's the called the radar thing radar radar yeah radar thanks and at some point i figured out how this processing stuff works in photoshop and this is a image of 2016 and i reprocessed it in 2020 and i was surprised by how much i could get out there this i have taken this with the sony kit lens at f5.6 i guess oh, that's a great photo really it's it's not bad it's really good and yeah. i it's i like it and i enjoy it to go back to old data where i thought it's it's just crappy data yeah. but in reality it wasn't i hadn't i haven't had the skills and it's my skills for it did you <laughs> uh, get do any light painting on the program robert sorry what did you do any light painting on the program to light up that boat? Um, we had a campfire. It was it was the same night actually as this one, and we I had see. that light there uh, standing there, oh, okay. illuminating the boat. So you, you did uh, do some kind of light painting on it because it looks it looks like there's a light. Oh. Yeah, I didn't do light painting. It's just I don't know. It's just illuminated from the side. And that's it. Yeah. Um, and this image is from March this year. I finally bought a Star Trekker. Uh, it's back there. Um, a Star Adventurer Mini. And I was extremely surprised by what I can get out of the sky where I'm living. This is just a few kilometers away from the city, and you can see the city lights illuminating the fence and the and stuff. That's there's okay. a lot of light pollution at the border there. That yeah, it's stuff. a lot of light pollution, and somewhere back there, there's uh, Slovenia and Itali Italia, and Yasha's living somewhere there, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just extremely bright. Uh, can can um, you tell us some some technical details about uh, the photo? So uh, this is, I think, it's stacked in some way. Yes, of course. Yeah. So I took, I captured the background. I don't know. I'm not sure. It's um, I captured it with my Samyang 12 millimeters, and it's a three panel. It's a two or three panel. Oh, really? Um, mosaic, I think. I'm okay. not. 100% sure. I think it's a two panel. And it's half an hour okay. of integration time. And the foreground is just three minutes mm -hmm. or four minutes of the foreground stacked with ISO 400. And nothing special, really. And, and you can push the data pretty good. 
Is so, your is your camera modded? Yes, that's with an modded uh, Sony A. What's it called? Sony A uh, sixty three hundred. Mm -hmm. With an Astro modded. Okay. And um, also without filters, just the camera, no light pollution filters, nothing. I wasn't aware that you can go so low, low to the south. That is uh, really the core of the galaxy and Ro of Fiji and all these. All these things I am not able to see them from my home. Yeah, That's I know, and crazy. I just and I I don't have uh, this problem in summer where the sun does go below mm. eleven degrees or something. What's it called? The astronomical uh, night. Yeah. yeah. And we don't have that here. It's always dark. And I just realized a few weeks ago when people uh, told me. Uh, what am I gonna do? I can't do astrophotography for two months now because there's always uh, light. And yeah, I yeah. was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and realized uh, that you have actually this problem in the north and I don't. So I'm, <laughs> I have a location. I have a good location in astrophotography. You can even see the Lagoon Nebula in your shot. Uh, it, it looks, it, how yeah. many images is it? I don't know if you mentioned that. How many images and what exposure do you know? Um, I think For it's panel. it's ten images um, at three minutes exposure time. Mm -hmm. And is I that per panel or in total? In total, thirty in, minutes. Yeah. In total, thirty minutes. Uh, it's a three minute exposure and ten of them. And then, how did you do the frame? I stacked. I stack the uh, sky, the sky separated from the ground. And I stack the sky in, well, I don't know. I think it was Sequator, mm. either Sequator or a uh, deep sky stack. I'm not sure anymore. And I just processed the sky, processed the foreground and combined them in Photoshop. The Milky Way is exactly on this position because I have one foreground image with the Milky Way at the exact size and position. The Milky Way would have ended just here, somewhere around here. And because this is a mosaic, I did two or three panels. I'm not sure anymore. I'm really not sure. And that's why I get this wide field of view. It was just a lucky shot because I was there and doing some deep sky and I had a camera, the camera with me and the star tracker. And I thought I'd just try it and see what I get. The, I've the... never done, I've never done a tracked Milky Way image before. <laughs> this is my first one. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, but especially with the, with the foreground, that's so cool. That's a real, for, this is a real photo. So no, um, yeah, you know, you can, point the, the tracker in the sky and do also good photos but with this foreground in it it's even more it's even better yeah it's not it's, uh, it's, it's, it's okay. not one of those cheap photos robert where people go during the day take the foreground and the blue hour and then they come back at night and say oh my god look at this this is almost like as real as you can get uh, yeah so absolutely like, i can try to find the raw images would be interesting i think Yes, that's right. Um, just to mention, because there are some new viewers uh, here in our live stream, uh, if you want to participate in our giveaway that we are doing uh, uh, under the session here, please feel free to drop a comment in the chat with the hashtag giveaway, as you see here in the screen. Um, if you are doing this, you will automatically participate in the giveaway of free vouchers for the telescope service online shop. So. Feel free to do this. Okay, now back to you, Robert. Thanks. So this is a single raw image. And I just captured a few of them at, I think it's ISO 400. Yeah, ISO 400, 181 seconds. That's three minutes. And I took, how many did I take? You said 10. 24, uh, 24 images. Oh, then so it's, it's 12 and 12 per panel because this is ah. one panel and there should be a second one if I go on with this. Yeah, 
this is the second panel. So this and that. There's a lot of overlap. You, you did it pretty good because usually people don't do enough overlap to stitch it together. So nice work. Yeah. Thanks. Um, oops. What did I do? You increased your volume. Yeah. Um, and the so foreground. going back to your photo for a sec, I want to ask everybody else, has anybody used uh, a light suppression filter for terrestrial photography? Um, I, I got one to try out, but I don't know if you, have you guys ever used anything to cut some of that yellow out in the horizon? Well, uh, look what came today. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Part on. <What> it? <laughs> it's Optolong L Pro for my 6D because uh, the cottage where I shoot from, uh, they built so, so many, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, uh, greenhouse, greenhouses. And yeah. it's the horizon is just so light polluted. So I thought I would try it on Milky Way. So I'll see what it can, what can it do. Cool. I ju I picked it up from the post office just today, so <laughs> great question, great timing. Yeah, I've also got uh, Optolong L Pro, and like I said, it's not really an access uh, accessory for me because it's just you can see it in the in the raw image in the yeah, single one. It's is, not that bad. There's real data in it. That's right. Yeah, it's but not but uh, you can try it. You will improve it even more. I think. Um, so, for in my experience, it cuts out a lot of the orange star colors. So there's mm -hmm. no way to get that back, and it's just a little bit of a pain if you're doing <laughs> an RGB and you want nice stars. You can always shoot a couple of images without the filter and just replace the stars. That's true. Um, I found no problem. I, I didn't. No I didn't get the charge. Yeah, I've had no problem getting the oranges with it with the L Pro. Um, I have to, I have to, I have to use an L Pro in Cape Town on Bortle Seven Eight, so it's absolutely absolutely critical for me to to use a some kind of flat suppression filter if I'm doing RGB. But I've had no problem getting the oranges. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'm doing something. Well, you're fighting noise, right? So the moment you have the filter, you have more noise, so you need more data to get a better signal to noise ratio. So the, or the, per the orange is there because I don't think the Alpro suppresses that. It suppresses a different wavelength of, of sulfur, I think, or the sulfur lighting. So I, I think you should give it a try. I think idea the idea that Jan has is really good to do almost like what people do with mono and, and do RGB yeah. color stars. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have actually a um, example of this. What I what I mean with uh, orange star colors, the ghost of Cassiopeia. Where I did. There's no orange. There's basically no orange in the stars, and this is with the L Pro. I'm pretty sure I used it back then. I know I'm 100% sure because I didn't have the UV IR cut. And there is not really a lot of orange in the stars compared to this one. So, and it wasn't hard to get that out. Also the dust, the orange in the dust, I didn't get that with the L Pro. I don't know why, maybe I'm doing something wrong. But oh. I'm just, it's just easier for me to do it without filter. No, the moment you add a filter, you're slowing down your, your whole imaging chain a little bit. Right? So the, the, the idea is that you're getting more signal if you get more data. So you can't compare no filter with a filter. It's almost like an ND filter. You're cutting a little bit of your light. Uh, so mm -hmm. maybe you need more data now. Yeah, I can actually show that. Um, just for you people out there, uh, let me show you uh, what we are talking about. Um, oh. uh, unfortunately, you can't see this right now, guys. Uh, just a moment, Robert, please. I have brought up a filter curve from this Optolong L Pro filter. And we are talking about that this will cut out some of the light, of the light pollution, but of course also real color, especially in broadband targets where when you have a star that is shining in one of these uh, cutted bands, then this will just uh, vanish. 
Um, so this is a broadband filter, so you get pretty much light, but uh, it will cut out something. So yes, that can happen. That is possible. Okay, so sorry for the interruption, Robert, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, I have the same one, but I measured it with my own spectrum. Oh, okay, that's <laughs> way cooler, okay. <laughs> and you can see there, it's just the dip in the, in the uh, orange and yellow, yellow and orange. And that's, in my opinion, why I don't, I don't get the real star colors. But it's logical. It's it's absolutely, mm -hmm. and that's what it's doing. Um, you can see it here. Like oh, yeah, the okay. Pro, I see you're well prepared. Cutting, it's cutting out CFL lamps. It's designed for cutting CFL emission lines. You can see it here. And the sodium vapor lamps, the orange ones in the street lights, lights they are also mm. being cut out most of it. Yeah, it's designed for that and, and it's doing its job pretty good. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but back to this. Yeah, I think we're going deep sky. Mm. Um, this is my first Andromeda image also untracked back in January 2020 before I bought my EQ3, my first mount. And there oh, is... You, you had an EQ3 before? EQ3? Uh, I did have an EQ3. Okay. I still have it. I'm not really using it anymore. Mm. My EQ5, the Exos 2 is just that much better. I don't yeah. need it. Sure. Yeah. And the EQ3 is it's a it's a good mount. It uh, yeah, I had it for a year. I used it for a year. I used it even when I had the AVX because it tracked better than the AVX. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I heard also some stories about the AVX. Some people are super happy with it, uh, tracking absolutely fine, and the other ones say no, no, AVX is crap and loud and noisy and yeah can't work with it so that's that's weird uh, yeah it's it's really crazy the first time i turned my avx down because i rebuilt it completely i gave it precision um bearings and stuff mm -hmm. and new ptfe washers um i found a rock inside of it like literally inside <laughs> of it where it never ever can get in there <laughs> So I don't know where they put them together, but I am not sure. It's stability. You need a rock for stability. It's well known. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I could hear it. If I was uh, Whoa, that's... like rocking it around, I hit the, I hit the, the little stone inside. It's, it's not that good. <laughs> no. Uh, was it used? A used one? Yeah, it was a used one, yes. Uh, maybe maybe, yes. Uh, maybe some weird things happened to this mount before before you got it. Yeah, nobody knows. It's it's probably an old one from 2012 or 13. Yeah. It was hyper-tuned with a rock. They <laughs> <laughs> should make a term for that. It, it's worse than Nova's you would think on, uh, on Instagram. So a rock in there is worse than what she had. <laughs> yeah. And the second one I did was, was Orion. The classic Orion Nebula. That's, I think it's the first target you shoot if you are yeah. starting with astrophotography. If you start in winter, yes. It's bright in Israel. what? If you start in winter. Yeah, I started <laughs> in... Then then you shoot M42 first, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's oh. one of my first images with um, with the Eco3. But what what the change, what the improvement? Yeah, it's it's not bad. You can see M78. Yeah, that's even and the horse said pretty clear i was extremely proud yeah. of this image because you can see the the dust around mm. orion and back then i thought i would never ever be able to capture this <laughs> and it popped out in this image and yeah. i was just so hyped <laughs> and this sure. this is what really hooked me then and i couldn't stop sure, yeah. Yeah, Good right. Thing. And also, you, you did a good framing here. Uh, normally, when, when one starts shooting these targets, 
you would focus M42 and then get M78 somewhere in the corner, maybe. <laughs> uh, so this framing here is perfect. Yeah, I kind of planned it already. Okay, I yeah, I thought so. Yeah. On my phone. Mm -hmm. And I, I did some test shots where I could see the stars and I could see the core of M78. And then I knew, <laughs> okay, a bit here, a bit there. And it worked out pretty well. Yeah. Um, this, I took this with a Sony A7, the Mark II, with an A7 mm -hmm. Mark II, without modifications. This was a stock cam. Oh, okay. And, and do this you... This was no Astro modded cam. Do you remember how long it was integrated or, or how many subs, uh, you know? Well, I'm not <sighs> sure. Because can, um, this but region... But I can check that. No yeah. Problem. This region around the horse head is pretty hard to get without a modified camera. Yeah, I'm surprised it uh, it captured it because Sony's aren't known for their H alpha sensitivity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it it's well, I'm not sure. It should be half an hour or, or an hour at least. Um, when did I do that? In March last year, maybe. Oh, in April. It was at the end of an age. No, that's the wrong one. And yeah, the tracking was off on that one. That's not looking. Yeah, this could that, be it. This is it. it. Yeah. Yeah. This is it. Um, So this isn't a mosaic, right? It's one single shot. No, this is a single shot. Yeah, it is, uh, it's a full frame camera. That's why the field is that wide at 135 millimeters. Oh, 35 millimeters, okay. Uh, it's, yeah, 42 images stacked. 42 images, two minutes. That's mm. 80, 84 minutes. Yeah, okay. That's 84 nice. minutes. Yeah. I'd like to reprocess that now. Uh, not now, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll find that reprocessing gets you to a point where I think the imaging and improving your uh, collection capabilities and yeah. your data, uh, the amount of data is always going to be better. I think reprocessing can only do this much, even if you get into picking site. Uh, so. The heart, the heart and the soul. Yeah, this was one of my first tries at shooting something, uh, shooting an emission nebula with an unmodified camera. And I got a little frustrated. Yeah, because I know. I know this. <laughs> it's not that great. And I, um, I saw images where they used unmodified cameras and they got a nice blue core of the Sol nebula and around minute 15 the colors just didn't pop out and I had a lot of uh, noise and I think I may have just clipped the blues away <laughs> or sit it's, or, it's yeah. very hard the blues are very dim. Yeah, so I mean because I also have no blue stars I'm just realizing now but hey it was one of my first tracked images and I'm but now do this with a modified camera. This is such a difference. I, so I know this from personal experience. I tried this so often, uh, heart and soul with an unmodified camera and it's just a pain. Uh, when you switch to a CMOS, to an Astro camera or to a modified one, this, this nebula is popping out uh, instantly. So I know what effort you put in this one here. <laughs> I actually tried to shoot the heart nebula with a mono, uh, with a color camera, 268 mo uh, color and a Radian quad. Okay. The best uh, multi band pass filter, right? Yeah. And I shot about five or six hours and I could barely see the blue. Uh, put mono in there with an O3 filter. Within two hours, you can start seeing the beautiful blue. So mm. it's very hard to capture with one shot color. So give yourself credit for a great image. Don't, don't yeah, get that's it too a, much. That's an unmodified, normal stock uh, mirrorless camera. So I'm, I was happy with it. Yeah, yeah and uh, these are the plates, and you can see the the halos around them. 
I didn't have a filter back then, but my camera just didn't like it somewhat. They, the Sonys don't like brighter stars and there are always halos around them. And I don't, I don't think it's your camera. I think it's your, it's your glass. It's this is true? basically an artifact from your doublet. Yes, yeah. I think oh, this your camera star, has nothing to do with I think this was captured with my Samyang one yeah. at 135 millimeters. But I also think yeah. that can be the lens. That is, it I think be. it's the lens. So, so the, this but is from... The Samyang shouldn't do that. I, I have something, but you said you have a full frame camera, right? Because yeah. you should have much wider field if it hmm. was a Samyang. I could also have taken this, uh, captured this with the A6, A6000 I'm filming with right now. I'm not sure. I had a lot of cameras. <laughs> 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 and I'm so you, usually halos anything there's two things could be tilt or pinched optics or worst case the glass basically is is not ed so you could have done it with the non ed samyang and maybe Jan is referring to the ed samyang because there's two different versions right right yeah yeah, yeah. but i mean if, if if it was uh 135 the uh field of view would would be much wider so yeah that's yeah. what i'm Oh, it's cropped. It's cropped for sure. Oh, it's cropped. Oh, okay. It's cropped for sure. Um, I'm just trying to find more information about that right now. And I think I found more information about it. Let me see. No, that's Venus and the Pleiades. That was cool. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Last that year, was yeah. a very cool event. Mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed it watching. Um. Yeah, this could be it. And crop down a lot. Whoa, that was really crop down. Yeah, this is yeah. also what I can, what I would expect from 135. Yeah. Yes, and it's cropped hard. <laughs> yeah, but then that's that's okay, really. Well, let's go on. Um, this mm -hmm. is the North America Nebula. It's what is it called? NGC 7000? Yeah, I guess. That's right. And this is the first image I was extremely, I was extremely happy with because the field of view is just so nice. I really liked it. Um, for my knowledge back then, I got the stars pretty, pretty well under control. And you can see a lot of nebulosity in there. Um, I bought uh, this is one of the first images I took with my Sony a6300 and after I astro modified it so mm -hmm. this is already with an astro modified cam and um, with the Samyang 135 and with the what's it called STC astro multispectra clip filter because yeah, STC dual, astro band, right? was or is the only company that sells clip, clip filters for the Sony mirrorless ah, cameras. Yeah, yeah. And they are doing really bad halos around. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's it's the filters cost, definitely, because if I put the filter out, the halos yeah. are gone. This is so wide off axis, so you get some, uh, any issues you can imagine. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's probably a lot of things is the, the light cone that comes in at that specific wide angle, like the yeah. person saying, it's pretty clear that that's, and it doesn't halo in the middle. It halos at mm. the corners, which is probably the light cone from the filter. Oh, it also halos in the middle, but just, you, you just don't see it there. Okay. Oh, it's a smaller or, style. Okay. Or, or they are centered, more centered. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, that's a great photo, <laughs> honestly. Great photo. That's Absolutely. That's it's good, more than good enough for Instagram. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, wise mm -hmm. This was epic. You could see it with <laughs> bare eyes over the horizon. This was so cool. Yes. Um, this is not much data. I didn't even track it. I just slapped my camera on a tripod and that's 10 seconds exposures, I think, or less, even less, maybe five seconds and a few minutes stacked mm -hmm. nothing special with my sony and the uh, samyang 135. um there is uh, there's such a bright uh 
bright part on the on the lower end is this because it was so near above the horizon or yeah okay yeah. yes yeah um something something got in the way in the image and i didn't mm. i didn't remove it it's just there okay but you can see the iron trail which is yeah cool. yeah that's right um the crescent, crescent nebula i don't know mm -hmm. how to pronounce yes. it yeah crescent. that's right crescent, crescent. Yes, the space brain. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a pretty cool one. <laughs> yes. um, yeah, this was uh, one of my first images I took with my um, TS Optics ED 80 millimeters. And um, I didn't use a filter, I guess. Or I used, no, I used the, the STC. <laughs> okay. I used the STC for yeah, sure. Okay. And that's uh, 65 times 300 seconds Whoa. exposure. Okay, that's long, but yeah, okay. Um, that's really long. That's six hours, right? Is it a little bit over six hours? It's a little bit over six hours, yes. Nice. This was one of the first images I took my time with and captured a lot of um, integration time. But I think I could really improve it with my skills now because I'm using PixInsight instead of Photoshop and I didn't know what I was doing back then. <laughs> really. You have a hint of that oxygen bubble around it. So if you if you would reprocess it, I, I believe you should be able to to get that uh, oxygen envelope around it to pop yeah. it up a little bit. I'm, I'm pretty sure I could. I just turn the blues and stuff down back then because it was the Sony was so noisy and this I took I still took this with my a6300 my first um, cooled astro camera the first one I had the 294 I bought it in January this this year everything I did before was with my Sony so so then, if you reshoot it again um, on your bottom right a little bit lower is a hard nebula to get a hard one to get it's called a soap bubble yeah i know this and i didn't find it in this data it's not it's you don't have it there it's lower it's lower it's, it's out of the frame it's just okay. a bit lower yeah yeah but it's not bad and this i can't tell you what exactly this one is <laughs> you have 1045 to right yourself. Yes, <laughs> thank you for the mention, Robert. This is uh, indeed a point where I ask, uh, uh, jump in and I would ask you, the viewers, what object this is. If you can't answer it correctly in the chat, then you are able to win this one here, a 50 euro voucher. So we are giving away the 30 euro vouchers by a lottery, by a raffle, but the 50 euro voucher um, is, uh, yeah, let's say connected to a question. And if you can tell us what this object is, then you may be win it. The number, whatever number you have in mind is okay, or the common name is okay. So uh, <laughs> let's just... Can I, can I help the public? Thurston, I really want to help the people who maybe are here and thinking this is the Milky Way. It's not the Milky Way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, whoa. The, the okay. Doesn't work there anymore. is already an uh, answer coming in from Jeb's Hobby Astro. And yeah, of course, uh, guys, would you agree that this is M31? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Jets Hobby Astro, um, congratulations, you just won this voucher. 50 euros are yours. If you do another little thing, um, I will I will just uh, show you just a moment. Our contact email address is now here in the video, fullmoonlive.ts at gmail.com. So this is uh, coming directly to me and I will give um all the infos uh, then to telescope service so please uh, drop us or drop me an email with your contact details because we have to know this uh, to to send you this voucher this is also applying for for the for the 30 euro vouchers that will come uh in a couple of minutes i think okay so yeah guys you 
have it all right. Of course, that's the uh, large Andromeda galaxy. Uh, unfortunately, only the first one can win. Uh, but thank you very much for your participation. So now back to Robert to tell us something more about this object and this photo, Thanks. of course. So uh, the this image was captured using my Sony A6300 and I already had the Optolong L Pro filter. I think this is the first image I captured with the Optolong L Pro. And it, I didn't have a reducer back then on my scope and it, the Andromeda Galaxy fits just perfectly at 560 millimeters. Uh, focal length. This is a, a single shot, no mosaic, nothing. And you can see some, um, even some detail, I'd call it detail, in the little galaxy over there. That here, that's M101. Oh, no, I, I think, no, not M101. No, 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 no. Uh, 205, I would say. 205, okay. Uh, but no, NGC 205. Oh, oh my God! That's embarrassing. Just, just oh. a moment. He, he, he owes fifty euros first and second. <laughs> that would be worth it. The galaxy, the guru, so, yeah. Yes, yes, that's absolutely right. It's 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 not that. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, let's just go on. And this is a version of it I took back in oh in some time. I think in November with my Samyang and it's untracked. So I didn't use a star tracker. I just put the camera on the tripod and took three or three and a half second exposures, 500 of them, uh, stacked everything, processed it. And that's the result of it. That's so great. you can also do deep sky without the tracker. That's what I wanted yeah. to. Yeah, that's super cool. That image. Uh, Robert, just a second. Um, I have to say sorry. Uh, this is indeed Messier 110. Uh, 110. Uh, I, I'm not sure what you what you said, but uh, M110. It's also yeah. called NGC 205. So okay. I said 101. <laughs> I for, thought it was ah, yeah, okay. for, for the for the next giveaway we are improving our questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um this is part of the Veil Nebula. And I think it's the first image I try to take on uh, to choose my first ever images of something I did. Um I captured it with the Allen hands, with the Optolong Allen hands. I bought from Yasha. Thanks, Yasha, again. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a great filter. It's a really good filter. It reduced the stars by a lot, a ton. And it was just so easy to, to make this look good. And I could also see this faint nebulosity around here. And I didn't even really pay attention to it. I didn't even mask and stretch it or something. It's just there. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure how much exposure time this is. I think not that much. I think three or four hours. But it's great, really. Mm. really and really oh, good. and I, I took 10 minute exposures back then, also with my Sony. So I think if you if you look closely here, there's a lot of H alpha in this image, and this is a, one mm. of my favorite nebulas. Yeah, you can see you even captured like the, there's an outline of this nebula, so it's almost like uh, around it there's this really uh, dim red, and if you look closely on the outside of the tail, you can see it. So nice work, I think you did a good job here. You can yeah, you, you're drawing it there. So yeah, this one. It's almost like it has a a shadow behind it. So mm. nice work. And I didn't, I didn't even know this when I was shooting this. Somebody told me that this was there and I realized, oh, it's there. Cool. <laughs> so uh, this is the, what is this called? Pelican Nebula? Pelican, yeah. Pelican. Pelican Nebula. This is the neighbor of NGC 7000. 
Yes, exactly. And this is the only detail shot, let's say, let's say detail shot I have from the North America nebula region. And I have to do more of this region this summer because it's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I'd really like to capture a, a mosaic four by four or, some, or something. Uh, not a four by four, a two by two or a f two by four. A multi a multi panel mosaic, let's call it. Let's not draw the matrix. Um what filter are you using here? Is it still the L the, the L enhance or what are you using? The L enhance, yes. The L enhance still. And I didn't I didn't do this, uh I didn't make the starless, it's just I processed it like it was and you can see it in the stars, they're not that great. Well, one thing I'd like to add, starless images are very hard to do if you don't have low bandpass filters. So if you have something around seven, six, then you're going to have to deal with a lot of artifacts. So when you have three nanometer bandpasses, then it's very easy to do starless because you barely have big stars. So starless images are hard to get right. So I think you did great not necessarily going for it. And yeah, starless images are tough, uh, especially with the ED refractor because it has this, the stars are pretty large and it always does some kind of halos and Starnet can't really handle with that. You haven't lived until you try to remove spikes from stars, trust me. I think ED refractors are easy when you get a Newtonian with a big ass X or a RC, then it's harder to remove those. <laughs> I <laughs> Um, yeah, and this is the Orion Nebula. This is a project I was working on for a month, I think. I captured it every time I could, and it's something over 20 hours. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I really, I really focused on getting all this uh, dark nebulosity yeah. around it. Uh, please tell us about camera and uh, exposure settings. That's still with my A6300. Okay. Unbelievable. And, I, and the L Pro. I used the L Pro okay. and my 6300 for that. That's it. The no. Dual exposure or single exposure for the core? How did you do that? How did you get the dynamic range in the core in the trapezium? <laughs> That's a funny story. Uh, <laughs> because I have a Newtonian telescope and I had it standing on my balcony random at random times because I was watching stars and stuff. And one night I thought I'd just slap on my Sony, my camera and shoot a core of Orion at thousand millimeters. And that's Newtonian data I placed into the core. Okay. Nice. Yeah. That's it working. Worked. Yeah, it worked. It just it looks not. It doesn't look that bad. Mm. I messed up the colors somehow in processing, and I never did it again. Um, it should be blue inside and not this salmonish pink. But yeah, it is what it is, and I like it. I really like mm. it. It looks great, and I printed it. It it's hanging on my wall. Yeah. Robert, there, there was the, the question, is the camera modded? So I, I didn't get it anymore. Is this camera modded for this image? Yes, of yes, course, it this is. camera is modded, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, and this is my first image with the real Astro camera with the Zwo ASI 294 MC Pro. And this is the ghost of Cassiopeia. How do you pronounce Cassiopeia? I don't know this. Like you did Cassiopeia. Well, Cassiopeia. Like that, I think okay. it's fine. I don't know this yes, name. You won't like the way. <laughs> um, this is about four hours of integration time. I took six minute um, exposures back then. That's why the bright star I forgot the name of is <laughs> burned out. Um, yeah, and I used the L Pro again. The L Pro was my was one of my favorite, or is or is one of my favorite filters still. 
because it doesn't produce halos around bright stars. And filters are, re are really known to do that and it doesn't, so that's great. <laughs> and this is the Rosette Nebula with the captured with the L enhance and my um, 178. So I had some problems with the 294 capturing narrowband images, especially in the H alpha channel, it produced awful um, artifacts and sensor. I don't know how to call this. I don't even know to, how to explain. And can I just briefly interrupt you? Uh, yes. If I may uh, ruin Rosette Nebula for all of you forever, uh, do you see Casper, the friendly ghost, in it? Yeah, yeah. He I... is in the middle. He's in the middle. Once you see it, so you, you never unsee it, so... No, sorry, I don't get it. I also <laughs> see a skull. Okay. This is a skull, there's the eyes and the nose. Oh yeah. my god, oh, yes! Yeah. <laughs> Hell yes! <laughs> And I yeah, always it is called Skull and Bones as well, right? That's, that's crazy. Really, yes. Uh, I saw the Rosette some <laughs> many times before, uh, but never never saw this. Yeah, it's it's kind of obvious. And <laughs> it doesn't matter how I turn it and, and from which direction I, I look at it. Mm. And I always see this car and I can't <laughs> get that out of my head again. So. I can't. To be honest with you, it's hard for me to see the skull. I, I see something else. But I, 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 know I it's see the skull, skull right before. now, but when you turn it the other way, I, I see just just the Casper. Yeah, and it I has to be see, this way. Yeah, I'm, I can't I'm see Casper. <laughs> uh, you have Crazy. to rotate it uh, counterclockwise. Rotate it. Yeah. So so two more, more. times. Now and and the 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 middle the darker spot is his left yeah. eye, and yeah. the nose of the skull is his mouth. I I think or or uh, how how to say that? Uh, yeah, this. I know what you mean. <laughs> oh my God, that's the that's the mouth. Yes. yes. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> now you see. It. Oh no. <laughs> I just thought it was that lump of oxygen in the middle, to be honest, that small lump of oxygen that's in towards the center, towards the, no, yeah, to the right, bottom right of that. I thought that was Casper, to be honest. Uh, oh my but... god. Now I can never look at this again. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. How are you doing? <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, this is the horse at Nebula. And this is one of the images I took with the 294 um, as a broadband image. So no H-alpha uh, filter or something, it's just uh, the L-Pro and uh, 294. And I had an image, I found it on Instagram from, I don't know his name now. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks for that. I found his image and I really liked it how he made the colors and everything. And I tried to kind of make mine look a little bit the same. Is that, is that Trevor John's image that you showed? <laughs> Astro Backyard? No, no, not, not Astro Backyard's image, no. Okay. A different one. Uh, I, a different backyard. <laughs> a dif a image of a different backyard, yes. <laughs> there are a lot of Astro Backyards actually right now. And it's getting more and more. Yeah. It's really crazy. Is there even an Astro Front Yard? <laughs> is, that, is that your new name? Is that what it is, Peter? Is that what you're going for, Astro? No, 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 no. I'm, yeah, no, I'm, I'm sticking, sticking with Astro Cape Town. But uh, I think it's uh, Sean uh, Nielsen. Oh yeah, yeah, Visible Dark. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, there is he. This is the image. We don't see it. It's also very good. It's it's way better than mine. He's way he's it's a uh, way Rob, more detailed. Robert Sean is, oh. a, Sean is a, oh, that's not Sean. It's <laughs> I don't actually. Oh, wait. Oh, look at the horse. Oh. Yeah, but he did a great job. Doing the horse, it's really good. 
Um, yeah. And bro, Ofuki. Yeah, that's difficult. That's Ofuki, right? Ofuki. I'm not sure. Bro, Ofuki. Just call it. It's the formation next to the Milky Way, right? <laughs> Yeah, this I took this in March this year, so I went on the next mountain and shot through a few kids because I I love this image. I love this target. It's it's one of the most it's the it's the most beautiful target in the night sky. Absolutely. And there is there is no one I like I like more than this. And this is the reason or one of the reasons I started astrophoto astrophotography. I, I scrolled through Instagram and saw an image of Rofuki from Mehmet Ergun, mm -hmm. the German Turkish uh, astrophotographer. Yeah. And I like that picture. It's, it's just beautiful what he did. And I tried to capture this last year. Um, I'm living. Yeah, you can see it. It's it's rise about it rise about 18 degrees in the sky, and I couldn't see it from my backyard and from my garden because the house is in a way and trees and stuff. And I went on my roof <laughs> and captured it from my roof last year in summer, but it wasn't that great because the city. I had to shoot through the light pollution of the city, and that's why I. Um, gave it another try this year and I went on a mountain to avoid um, light pollution and that's what it is now and it's it's great star reduction sucks a little bit and I'm not sure how do you handle that many stars easy you go mono and then uh, you basically only <laughs> you, you expose less I think with, with white field it's always really hard when you have so many stars, uh, it, there's no great way to do it. I think every image could be different. So, uh, yeah, it, it was tough with yeah. the stars, and I I struggle. I still struggle, even if I use Pixinsight star reduction, or I try to use Starnet, but it's a catastrophe using Starnet on something like this. Um, uh, I, I still thing, don't. One thing I would propose is to try deconvolution a little bit, depending on your imaging scale. That might might make the smaller stars more more adaptable. The large stars, there's nothing you can do. It's just yeah. there's ways to yeah. work around them. And there's a tutorial bottom block to remove the halo, but through I think pixel map. But yeah, I mean it, it's it's a lot of work. Hmm. Yeah, but still, uh, it's my most liked by far my most hmm. liked image on Instagram. It has something like three and a half thousand likes. <laughs> <laughs> it's <Wow>. insane. It, <laughs> It just hit, it just kicks, and people liked it. And I just, I don't know why, I just posted it at the right moment, I mm. think. Yeah, but when everybody, great. When everybody started Galaxy season, I posted draw of you. <laughs> I think you tagged the girl Mark in there, and he, he helped out. Uh, Zuckerberg, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, and this is the... Aris Nebula. Uh, this is also a project I worked on for two months, and I shot this with my two, with the zero uh, seven one MC Pro, and this time with no, it's still with the Pro, I think. Not sure. Um, how many images did I? take for this i think <laughs> this is 25 hours something 25 or 30 hours so guys i think you year. should put together all the iris nebula data sometime then we are able to get i think 70 hours or something that's so crazy um, last time iwan showed his, his iris nebula and that was fantastic then i said it was the best iris i ever saw but this one here is also <laughs> spectacular really if you this is where you should use star reduction because you see that little dim uh, dust the way i got mine out is to do star reduction and you can be a bit aggressive about it in the end it's it's your photo so there's two things that matter in this case is your optics and the amount of star size you get so the 
the better the optics, the smaller the star size you get in a way. So all of these contribute in, in time to getting you to see that dust that's hard to see. Yeah, I, I had to do um, a lot of star reduction still. You can see the stars are pretty blown, um, especially this one up here because my optics aren't the best and yeah, but I'm working with what I have and I like it. I, I think you're doing a great job. And yeah, I think we, all really want, definitely. we all want the FSQ-130 Takahashi that nobody can find anymore. So don't worry about it. Everybody's dealing with similar issues in the long term. Um, and I also had an, an idle image uh, of this one. So uh, Daniel Nimafol is an Austrian astrophotographer. He also has a YouTube channel and really good videos. Yeah, yeah. And he did this but with his Newtonian, I think, and a monocam a few years ago, maybe. And I found his image and it just looks that great. It's why, because that's why I um, decided to try it. Yeah, I, I saw this too. That was, that was also great. Um, yeah. Robert, uh, just again, the technical question. Uh, you mentioned the, the integration time, but uh, camera, optic, and, and how do you track it? Um, how do you do your auto guide? Oh, yes, of course. So I'm using PHD2 okay. for guiding. And I have a BADA uh, VarioFinder uh, 10 by 60. It's not really guide scope, but it works great. It's, um, wait a second. It's this one. So this is my guide scope. And I use uh, RC17, ASI178. It's a planetary cam, yeah. a monocam, but I use it for um, guiding because it, had, it has a pretty large sensor for its pixel size. It has just 2.4 nanometer pixels and a pretty large sensor with six and a half megapixels or something. The and camera of choice for solar photographers. Let's just bring that yeah. up. Everybody's using that when it comes to yeah. solar. Yeah, it's a great camera, and you have this huge uh, field of view in the guiding, and it always finds more than enough stars for multi for multi star guiding. Mm -hmm. And that was the the factor why I bought it because of multi star guiding. And I read some articles on Cloudy Night about it that it's a great um, guide cam too. So I can use it for guiding and for planetary and solar and all in one if I want. I don't have a solar scope because it's pretty expensive, sadly. <laughs> um, you got any got any tin foil in the house? Uh, any any aluminum foil? You wanna you wanna oh, put oh, yeah, in there? Yeah, I tried that. Just make yourself a solar scope. Yeah. <laughs> I have I have the standard the normal solar foil for, for uh, watching it visually, <laughs> but it's. It's not that spectacular. You can see sunspots, but that's it. Um, yeah. And I'm using my tripod with my <laughs> Exos 2. And yeah, that's basically it. There's nothing more. Uh, I use a, a reducer for this image. I'm at 400 and 47 millimeters of focal length mm -hmm. with this reduced at f, f 5.6 or something 5.7 not sure and i didn't get the backspace right for a very long time and you can see the elongated stars in the corners mm -hmm. everywhere and i cropped this already a little bit yeah and also stars with more than one color <laughs> which is not <laughs> ideal but if you don't look too close, it's good. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> it's good. Nobody looks too close on Instagram. They don't. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Just... That's why I don't have a stripping account. <laughs> 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 and this is M63 mm. at 447 millimeters of focal length. That's already cropped. And there is surprisingly a lot of detail in there my setup my camera and scope setup is um, under sampled by a little bit and i always drizzle my data to get a little bit of detail back um and the eagle nebula i shot this 
a few weeks ago when we had a single clear night. That's not very much data. It's about two and a half hours, I think. Um, but still, the pillars of creation are definitely there. Yeah. And I really like it. I I captured it with the 071 and um, a UV IR cut filter from Bada. Yeah, it's not it's not that it's not stretched that hard. That's why it's it's also pretty good noise wise. Yeah. And that's basically it. That's where I'm now. That's my my last image, I think. Or is there another one? Let me see. Oh, I found something. <laughs> the problem I had with the 294 Mm, yeah. That's that's reflections. Isn't that's it? not reflections. What is uh, it? It's M glow. It's oh, also yeah. not M glow. It's um flat issue. No, that's a single. <laughs> okay. That's a single uh, light. The issue was or or is most of or many of the two ninety four have that issue that if you're using a narrowband filter, especially an H alpha or a sulfa filter. It creates some weird pattern on the sensor that you can see in the image. It's it's something to do with the bio pattern, and you can always uh, you can also see it on the mono version of the camera if you're using uh, narrow so band it, filters. Is it reflecting so, off the sensor? Or what exactly is going on? Um, wait a second. That's, talking, that's a flat. Oh, oh. that's a flat. There's and I captured the sensor through the Allen hands with my Sony. And you can see the pattern on the sensor. That's... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's... I don't know exactly what it is, and I couldn't find a lot of information in, on the internet about it. It's a known problem. Uh, mm. Tzvo knows about it, and they call it tolerance. And <laughs> the problem I had with it is that I couldn't uh, calibrate it out. Yeah, and sure. Um, That's super weird. That's is, could it, could it be some some problem with humidity? No, yeah. it's not. It's not. It's definitely not because I like it's inside my room at twenty C. So somebody wiped the sensor with the wrong kind of uh, liquid. That's what happened. It's uh, like the rock um, inside the mouth. You can uh, you can Google this actually if you want. Yeah, if you're I, interested. I heard also and many many people have this problem, hmm. and. Also, a funny, a funny thing I think about this. I can quickly show you on Astro Shop. Um, the what? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, just, uh, just kidding. Uh, uh, just wait a second. Give me, give me, give me a moment. No. I'll explain. Okay, I'll explain. Um, yeah, it's in German. Wait a second. You can make this English. Oh, dang it. <laughs> this camera isn't suited for photography with H alpha narrowband filters or respective mm. multiband narrowband filters like Triad, etc. Oh. Um, because of artifacts and stuff. Because people oh. are returning the cam all the time because they can't mm. get rid of the artifacts the camera produces. I think it's an older chip, and CMOS cameras were never meant for space photography. Let's be yeah. honest; they're 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 yeah. used for it. You know, there's newer yeah. chips like the 455 and 571, but these were never meant for space. These are yeah. these are DSLR uh, chips, and you know, you make the most of it, and that's I think uh, what we're doing here. Absolutely if you want right. A space yes. camera, get a CCD or a G Pixel sensor, and that's really meant for space. Yeah. The 294 chip is actually made for um, night vision cameras, for yeah. security Sur surveillance cameras. Something, yeah. And it just has this problem. Uh, uh, it's, it's a Sony sensor, logically. It's one of this. And yeah, I mean, you can't really do something about mm -hmm. it other than taking flats, but you really need extremely good flats to get rid of this. And I just couldn't. And I also had this pattern visible uh, when I was using the L Pro, 
not that bad, but it was there. And I could see it in the... Why does this thing work now? Almost looks like a bad matrix problem where the pixels get accentuated or, or uh, well depth where those pixels get... Um, basically, the pixel well depth gets fill, uh, filled quicker, right? So that's why the red in, the, in those pixels gets filled. Maybe, maybe this could be the reason why, but I don't understand why you can see it on the sensor from outside. That's yeah, I guess I guess if you can crazy. see it, then it's not a pixel. That's absolutely it crazy. Be yeah, no, a I, matrix thing. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, the bare matrix and the, the alignment of, of these elements, and I'm also not sh exactly sure how this uh, filter mechanism is working. Maybe there's some polarization effect inside or whatever, uh, but it's really really weird so yeah, i strange yeah and i couldn't i couldn't handle it i couldn't i took flats and it was still there and it wasn't that bad but if you stretch the, da the data pretty much pretty hard and mm. yeah, you yeah. just can't get rid of this and the pattern is just it's awful and, and does the other manufacturer of cameras that we shall name qhy have this problem with their camera i believe it's only a zw issue isn't it oh that would be weird, to be honest, if they don't have it. But I, I'm honestly, I, I don't know it. I was looking I for. I would be surprised if the, the QHY has that issue. Because then it could only be the the front window of the camera, nothing more. Because um, the, you can't read out the CMOS much differently. Well, they they have they have UVIR put in front, right? Versus it's QHY that doesn't. So mm. we never know. I think we'll yeah. have to investigate. Um, um, I found an article about this on Cloudy Nights and a guy uh, removed the front glass and still had the pattern on the sensor okay. when he photographed it. Well, then it's time to remove the camera. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that point, I, uh, right. you, you gotta get a new camera. I returned the camera, to be honest, and swapped okay. it for the 071. Yeah. And there is uh, just some comments here in the chat, uh, more cat. Is, it's in the mode one only, isn't it? Um, but I think you mean the MM version, but we are talking about the 294MC camera. So both have, both have this problem, both versions. Really? Yeah. I guess I got, I guess I got lucky. I've got both cameras, the MM and the MMC, <laughs> and I don't see this at all. Yeah, not all of them have this. Uh, Yasha had a two, 294 and it uh, it doesn't have this, uh, have this but, problem. Okay. Peter, you have uh, 1600, don't you? And uh, I've also got the 294 and oh, okay. MC. Yeah. That's it's everybody's luck. You're lucky because you got a rock in your mouth and an extra bear pattern. So good luck there, Robert. You need to get more camera and see what else you can. <laughs> yeah, but now I'm fine. It's it's everything's great and I can Yeah. I can work now with my equipment I have. And I learned a lot about stuff because it mm. didn't work. But just, just just a quick note: the seventy one, the zero seventy one, was the first camera I discovered that has tilt tilted its sensor. So one of the photographers I know, Claudia Knights, Andy Armoli, discovered it. And since then, QH, uh, ZWO is putting tilt plates on the cameras, especially large ones. So right. that is because of the O seven one having tilt sense uh, tilt in its sensor. So. There's a story for you and, and, yeah. and, and, and that's that's the next part of the story because I have the 071 and it also had tilt and I had to deal with it and I had no clue how to do it and I figured it out somehow it works now. Cool. Nice work, Robert. Keep up the good work. Keep yeah. us appraised yeah. with this. Thanks. Um, yeah. Okay. I think this is it for now. Oh, there's an. Oh no, it's not done. It just stopped i don't know why yeah this is m78 my new image of m78 mm -hmm. nice work <laughs> okay and it yeah i processed it for a few days over a few days now and then when i wanted and noise was pretty bad like the 071 is is a very noisy camera actually it's not it's not great it's not great even if you have 20 hours exposure time, it's still noisy as hell. Mm. And I'm really looking forward to buying a monocam, but I have to buy filters and yes. I, have I have to save some money <laughs> <laughs> for that. Yeah, and um, Macarian's chain. And I, 
I don't know how many. I think it's seven hours. And there are so many galaxies. It's uh, insane. It's funny to to use plate solving in PixInsight on images like this and just pick off all the all the galaxy catalogs. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, you you'll get like thousands of galaxies in this this single image. Yeah, it's crazy. I did this. I can show you. Um, Where is it? There you are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of galaxies. It's really a lot of galaxies. And I love this image. It's great. I could even pull out some color in the galaxies, mm -hmm. in the eyes. It's cool. It's pretty cool. Nice work. I think this is uh, one of the most stunning images you can yeah. find when it comes to actual objects in there. Yeah. I still have a problem with the stars, but I think it's regarding to the scope that it just, I have colors with two uh, stars with two different colors and it's always green and orange. Um, and it's only in the corners. It could also be, uh, be the reduce I'm using, Okay. but I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, it's a great image. That's it. Okay, um, great. Robert, thank you very much. I stop this now. <laughs> okay, now uh, I'm really looking forward to your next images. You to do it for one year now? <laughs> yeah, one and a half years now. I started in Done. January 2020. Crazy. Okay, then we are looking forward for yeah, let's say in ten years or something. <laughs> That would be great. So we are literally l running out of time a bit. Uh, we are not limited uh, hard, but uh, I don't want to stretch uh, the evening too long. So what we definitely have to do is our giveaway. And I will do this right now, I think. Unfortunately, um, there were no, not so many uh, attendees today. So the chance for all you participating is super, super high. <laughs> and I will check this out, guys. Maybe you can check out the chat if, there, if I have missed something while I'm starting our raffle here. Oh, Ion is uh, already in the, <laughs> in the chat. Yeah, yeah, I was just curious because there's two, two types of uh, modes for uh, this 294 for QHY because it's been. Um... So, okay, we are just rolling let's see if the bot does its job properly whoa okay it works like a charm perfect good preparation is everything so we have our first winner beatrice congratulations oh rap <laughs> yasha yes, what are you not winning anything get, get up you, don't give it to yasha stop it what but are you doing yasha. <laughs> Hashtag toaster, do not give it to Yasha. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> okay, so Beatrice, our first winner, yeah, congratulations. Um, we do it again. And yeah, as I said, um, seven users are eligible to, to win, so <laughs> the chance is super high. Um, congratulations. And our third one. Uh, I hope that everyone of the commenters is still online because you have to drop us an email at the shown email address. Uh, please uh, add your name, contact details and your YouTube name to it that we can get in contact with you. So that's the plan. Congratulations to you all. And yeah, now let's quickly uh, talk about our last things maybe we can skip the imaging uh the, the showcase session for for today for today let's see or we can do it quickly because we don't as i said we don't want to stretch it too long uh a thing that i want to mention is and now i'm sharing just quickly my screen mm -hmm. um this is this one here the, can you see uh 
Can you see my yeah, screen? That see. that globe here. Uh, I just want to mention the the solar eclipse. As I said, it's not that the super highlight, except you live in Canada, because the zone of totality, or it's not real totality because it's annual, mm -hmm. is in Canada and Arctic. So you can see it there. Um, for all other people in Northern Europe, especially, you will uh, see a partial Norway. <laughs> sorry, a partial solar eclipse. Yeah, uh, exactly. Norway would be great. Great Britain, Finland, Great Britain would be no. Greenland, good. I think, is the place to be now, isn't it? <laughs> and what you can expect is something like this. Um, this was. Uh, shot from me in 2006 uh, with a 400 millimeter telephoto lens on a full frame camera. And this is the, the amount of, of cover that you can may see here somewhere in, in Northern Europe. But it's and a very important thing to mention. Um, you see this uh, literally on every piece of astro equipment. Don't look into the sun with an unaided eye. Never ever do look in the sun with an unaided eye. Um, this is super, super dangerous. Always use a proper filter. Uh, we uh, discussed this briefly before. Uh, always use a filter. They're super cheap from, from Bada. There's solar uh, filter available. No problem to, to use some sort of glasses, um, solar eclipse glasses and uh, also for your telescope do not, do not use sunglasses do not use help. sunglasses exactly they are not helping any in any kind except you're facing something like this and when we're talking about how long do you do astrophotography this is a photo from the 1999 solar eclipse that i took over hungary on film on kodak uh, kodak chrome 200 i think Yes, uh, with a Newtonian telescope. <laughs> um, this is. I remember this. I remember this is yeah. uh, a special edition currency in Romania for this in 2000. Uh, it was a big thing back then, and everybody thought either they're going to die or it's going to be amazing. So <laughs> nobody died. It was amazing. Nobody died, but yeah. it, it was uh, a fantastic. My first and only uh, total solar eclipse uh, so far, and it was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic feeling. Uh, just one last image. This was in 2003. <laughs> uh, there was the sun uh, also covered a bit and it was rising. Uh, it was just rising. It was 6 a.m. in the morning. Um, yeah, that was also great. I, I just think here at Torsten, the flat earthers uh, have a point that somebody <laughs> put the uh, orange light on the moon. <laughs> and it just shows. It just shows that it, 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 it's, it, it, it's proof, right? It just look at it. It's the moon. Yeah. It's just they change the color. <laughs> uh, since we're uh, since we're talking about the eclipse, I just can't mention uh, Professor uh, Druckmiller. He lives in Brno, the city I live in, and he's uh, worldwide famous for his uh, eclipse shots. So if I could share my screen. I would just show you. Yeah. Sure, yeah. He developed a bunch of methods of uh, processing, and he's a mathematician. Mathematician. Mm -hmm. uh, no, now you don't. What? What do? You, oh, yeah. You you can see that. Uh, uh, not funny. yet. Do you have, maybe you have to select your screen. No, you have to select your screen. Uh, uh, yeah. I I I did select it, and it it says. Uh, uh. Oh, your sh resume share. Oh, yeah, now, now you should see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, it, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. He developed a lot of... Uh, he's he's uh, doing some uh, mathematical image processing, and he developed a few new methods of uh, doing the eclipse photography. Wow. And, so uh, what is the... What is the uh, great part around it? Is that... What exactly is that that's... That's uh, Corona. That's solar, uh, solar flares, or what is it? Uh, this is actually the solar Corona you can see. And uh, when he started it, uh, the scientific community didn't believe that it's actually there, and they thought that uh, those are just artifacts from the processing. But it's actually 
uh, there and I think they matched his photos with uh, Soho uh, the uh, the space mm -hmm. probe that that points to the sun and it's actually matching so it's really there and uh, I really like this one this is from the uh, eclipse last year in Chile and here's a comet whoa oh. Okay, wow. awesome. <laughs> and you can see the moon, right? You can you can actually yes, see details yeah, yeah. of the moon, the sea of tranquility, sea of serenity. You can see the the uh, the moon surface because it's it's the uh, illuminated by the reflection from the Earth. Mm. So it's yeah. it's uh, absolutely amazing. And I saw the picture of of the rig they were using, and they they had like ten mono cameras uh, mounted on a huge panel. On I think it was. Uh, EQ8 or something like that, like huge mount and uh, eight different cooled cameras uh, with lenses. And uh, be because you have just just a few seconds uh, seconds yeah. to capture all of that. So he has a he he has this side, and it's uh, uh, he has a bu bunch of a bunch of these photos, and you can just uh, pick pick all Amazing. of all different mm. photos and also so he, he... I've seen something like what you're saying there's a observatory in New Mexico that has something called the Firefly which is I think they're using uh, 20 or 30 lenses and cameras in a big fork mount or more and it's crazy how much detail they can get out of that yeah exactly and also, he pub published a lot of papers on how to proce process these images, but th it's just uh, w way out of my my knowledge to to copy something similar. So uh, I went to Chile in uh, 2019 to, uh, and uh, I saw the total eclipse, and I have the data, but I'm just <laughs> not able to process it uh, <laughs> barely and not that well as, as I, uh, well i i couldn't process it as well as uh he does but uh I, my mind data is just too poopy <laughs> crazy i'd like to do this from home <laughs> well i think there's gonna be total total eclipse in i believe maybe 95 years in Central oh. Europe, <laughs> that, that could work out. Okay. Yeah, go get yourself frozen and you know wait for for, for a couple of uh, decades. But I believe twenty twenty six is gonna be in Spain, so it's quite 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 yeah. close. Mm, that's for us in Europe. That's very interesting. Okay, cool. So far, um, what do you think? Uh, have we, uh, do we have another five minutes for for sharing some photos or? Yeah, I, I think we should. <laughs> okay, should we do it. Who so, wants to start? I can start. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Peter. Amaze us with your portal seven and eight skies that nobody believes it's, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me. Uh, just one second. Let me just drag this over to a different desktop. And, until you do that, Peter, have you made your observatory all remote? Is that is that all done? Yeah, it's now it's now fully remote. And um, how much do I you charge can... per hour for some friends who want to image the dragons of Ara or other stuff? I've heard some people are interested. Uh, yeah, no, we should try it someday. I mean, just remote log in and give it a go. Um, I would love to. Right now, um, give me a second. Okay. All right, this should work. I think. I hope. Oh, almost. Yeah, we can see yeah. it. You can see it. Great. Um, SGP, I think. You're okay. This SGP. So yeah. the weather was pretty bad, but I did manage to capture um Eta Carina again but this time with the 61 edph and uh, this is an hoo image it's about 10 hours of data five hours 03 and, and five hours ha um i love the, the feel of view of this little scope it's it's really great 
uh, for these for these large targets. Um, and then um, last night I, I managed to finish. Um, oh, this is the Starless image. So these are with with. Um, hey Peter, um, you're sharing the wrong screen. We're seeing SGP in your browser. I think you're in either the wrong screen oh. or you're sharing. Oh, just um, hang on. I'm not seeing any Starless stuff. Uh, apologies. Let me just try again. No worries. Oh. Um. Why well, can't? I think you're sharing uh, an application or at least the wrong screen. Uh, that's what happened. Um, gosh. Um, I was trying to share a desktop. Um, And now? Perfect. Yes. Uh, it's Akarina, right? Is that what we're looking at? Yes. Yeah. So this. Oh. Can you make it bigger, please? Yeah. Yeah. Um... OK. So this is um, with the EDPH 61 millimeter um, from HOO, Eta Karina. Uh, it's about five hours in each channel. And um, yeah, this little scope, it's got a fantastic field of view. I really love it for, you know, for targets, big, you know, big emission nebulae, it's, it's great. Um, so that was the one image I was able to, to finish this past month. And then did a, a starless version. So there are a few artifacts left over. And I could, I suppose, clone stamp them out. Um, that came out okay. Yeah. Peter at the bottom, that's the Gabriel uh, Mistral Nendel at the bottom, correct? Yeah. The little yeah. one. That's the little one, yeah. Can, can you zoom in a bit more? That's so crazy. <laughs> there are so many details in it. Yeah, there's the keyhole as well. You can see quite clearly, quite clearly. And then, you know, these little sort of in intricate details of Dusty details, dark nebulae. That's really good. Um, and then um, last night, I got a, an exceptionally good night uh, in terms of seeing. So I managed to finish, um, well, not quite finished. I've still got to work, work a bit more on the processing. There's a bit of noise left, left over. But um, I kind of rushed this out today so I could show you. So this is NGC 4945, um, and it's about an hour and a half in each color channel, and then nine hours of luminance with, with the Edge HD 800. Um, and are you doing binning for the colors, or are you doing unbin? Um, so this is uh, with a 294 um, MM. Um, so it's uh, the bin two mode so it's not i didn't bin one for the luminance i, I suppose I, sh I i i could do that to get the higher resolution for on the luminance but uh in this case i bin two you know, for both color and and the luminance and there are you know these little sort of little galaxies here this little galaxy here this this i think is um about 410 million light light years away this little <laughs> spiral over here and then there's another one here. I'm not sure how far away this this guy is. And then this is about, I think, um, uh, two two three hundred million light years. This, there's a foreground star, but there's a galaxy behind it. There's there's another one there as well. That's really dim. Let me let me show you uh, if I see this right. Is this a galaxy here, Peter? Oh yeah, it could be yeah. It wasn't uh, interesting. It wasn't picked up. So I did a plate solve. So I picked up these guys, um, but I didn't pick up this this little one here. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, maybe that's too faint for a PGC designation. Yeah. Wow. 
So yeah, so it's a work in progress. I've, I didn't do any noise reduction on the individual channels. So that's why there's it's a bit grainy in the background, but um, the star colors came out nice. And there's quite a lot of detail on the galaxy. So I think I can, I can probably eke out a, a fairly reasonable image out of, out of this data. I think you have a lot of great data here, and I think with a little bit of uh, HDR, multi-transforming the core and some noise yeah. reduction. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do, do you do photometric color calibration on this one? Did you yeah, this was this was uh, exactly this was a uh, photo photometric uh, color calibration exactly. Amazing work, Peter. From portal seven and eight again. This is you know I mean there's no words to describe my amazement how you can get the details through so much muck. That's in the <laughs> Tell sky. me about it. <laughs> I feel embarrassed even showing you know images of uh of, from my 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 um all sky cam. We've got an all little all sky cam in the corner of the observatory and you know it just picks up so much crap all around around me, all the sort of headlights and people's TV screens and you name it. It's it's crazy. It's good that your neighbor doesn't have a plasma anymore. Uh um Nice work, Peter. And again, I would love to see if uh, we can collaborate on some of these. If you want to use my telescope in the northern hemisphere, I have some targets I really want to shoot in the southern hemisphere. So we yeah, should then, try to do going it. back to, to um, the Rosette Nebula, I, you know, because it was raining so much this past month, I went back and reprocessed some data that I captured earlier in the year. So this is uh, the Rosette. Um, can't quite I see the spell of this one. But, um, hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this is with the Rasa eight inch. So that's why the stars are a bit funky. You know, they've got little diffraction spikes everywhere. Um, cool. Okay. So that was basically my month. It was you know, pretty, pretty much rained out, but, uh, anyway, it was, uh, managed to get something. Nice ones, yeah, great. Okay. I would I would love to see what Jan has been doing, except jumping out of airplanes, Jan. I, mean, <laughs> I don't I'm jump lucky. out of airplanes, happy you're I with just us. run from the hail. <laughs> <laughs> it just takes off on its on its own. I don't need to jump. <laughs> but uh, s since you're interested, uh, uh, let me show you. Uh, I star started working on the uh the lip nebula and uh resume share again no we can oh. see your images we can see the tool of pha right uh yes uh so i started working on this one and the idea is that i'm gonna do uh three three uh panel mosaic uh and this is the topmost one and it's all going to be in uh hydrogen sulfur and oxygen and uh, this one has only four hours because just that there's not enough enough dark, dark here in north. So uh, you start. I, I really hate this time of year because you start shooting and uh, you're already ending the ending the session because uh, you, you can shoot only for like three or four hours because if you include the uh, focusing and plate solving and stuff like that it, it just it just takes so much time so i started work, working on this one and i think it's gonna take a long time to get get enough data because tomorrow i'll try to shoot some more but i'm just going to be adding more of, of the ha and uh, also the problem is that uh, right now when uh, when the uh, sun sets uh, the tulip nebula is quite low uh, in the horizon, so I have uh, the the uh, there's a lot of atmosphere uh, uh, be, uh, in front of it, so the the quality isn't that good. So I was also thinking that I I might have to uh, shoot this one again when it's going to be just above my head, because for example I thought uh, these these dark little clouds. Uh, of dust are going to be much more, uh, much more, much sharper, you know. 
And so you're fighting with seeing in a way, right? That's yes, yes, problem. yes, quite a lot. And so, so the may, maybe the solution would be to try to shoot something different for a while and then go to the Tulip Nebula. But I thought that I would start early because it's it's going to take a lot of hours. So I oh, thought I can it. Oh, yes. One suggestion I wanted to give you is if you, I end up always using H as my luminance. So if you really want to shoot this, you can shoot O2 and S, uh, O3 and S2, because those do will not, if you don't use them as a luminance layer, they will not introduce a lot of detail. So you yeah, can yeah, yeah, that's a, that, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, and, and the HA is, is also the, the richest, so. So, so there, there's a lot of detail. You, you, you got a good point. So I, I might try to do oxygen because also the moon is, is not bothering me right now. And uh, also I, I try to do. Can you can you see the galaxies now? Uh, I try uh, no. to. Hold on. You no galaxies. No. Oh, okay, late. I'm gonna have to switch it. So sorry. That's okay. Okay, now you should see the galaxies. Oh, I am eighty-one. Yeah. Cool. Yes, uh, this was just an attempt to try to use my six D with my uh, telescope, and the field of view was actually much wider. But uh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I just can take uh, good flats to correct the the huge vignetting because it's a full frame sensor, and I have a two point five inch uh, tube. Uh, in the focuser, focuser, and also I realized I won't probably be able to use my 6D with my telescope because there's a lot of dust specks uh, that got in there during the modification, which I didn't do myself because I wanted to avoid uh, getting some dust uh, underneath the, the replacement glass. and. Even the guy who has a cleanish room uh, couldn't do it uh, completely dust free. So I have a lot of specks of dust and you can see here in the bottom, for example, it's it's not that, that of a big deal, but uh, I won't be using my 6D with a telescope anyway, probably, but uh, I thought it would be nice to have the option. So this is just one night, I, I think, four hours of just testing target. And uh, those galaxies were just above. Uh, so so I thought I, I would shoot those. Then um, uh, hey, I have one question for you. Yes. With CMOS sensors, especially the most um, annoying ones, one way to flatten it perfectly is to match the ADU of your lights. So instead of going for one third of your histogram, get the ADU numbers for your lights and match those with your flats. And in that case, it might get you a lot better result than just doing the regular one third histogram. Thank you for the for the idea. I actually I didn't know that, but I tried using uh, doing flats. I had so many different sets of flats. Uh, going from uh, underexposing to overexposing, and I tried to I tried the different sets, and I had maybe 15 different sets of exposures for the flats, and I was trying to find the correct ones, and I just I just couldn't, so I gave up because it was really nerve-wracking, and uh, I I thought I wouldn't bother anymore, <laughs> but I, I I might I might give it a shot. Uh, the next one, I'll try to switch this one, can you share, yes. The next one is uh, the Cygnus region in HA, and this wow. was actually, this yeah. is Starless, and this was just a test of, uh, of a 50 millimeter lens I have from Yongnuo, and it's just the cheapest lens you can get, it's the Mark II, and I believe I got it for $60. <laughs> So it's, it, it's the cheapest Chinese lens and it's actually not that not that bad uh, for the price. And I had to do it starless because the corners were not really nice, but it's at f3.5 and it was uh, 
shot using my uh, Zvo uh, 1600 and uh, using my Skywatcher Adventure Mini. So these are unguided three minute exposures and oh. it actually turned out pretty fine. <laughs> Yes. Also, Indeed. also the, the the brighter parts are uh, quite clean, so I'm quite happy with it. And here's a crescent nebula. So, where's the tulip? Is the tulips nearby? Is it in this shot? Or? Uh, I don't. Uh, the tulip is is uh, lower. Oh, it's, it's, it's a bit lower, so it's not, it's not in there. But but I was quite surprised how it turned out. I didn't really thought that, thought much about it, but. It's 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 for for the price. It's absolutely incredible lens. Uh, if you if you want to do something more serious, uh, maybe you should get a Sigma or something like that. But I I bought it just uh, actually just to try it out, and I'm quite quite surprised how how the photos are turning out. Also, I shot the whole Orion uh, during the winter and quite fine and um, I also think it's the operator a lot of the times yeah and I think it's the person <laughs> who uses the lens who makes oh. a good shot uh, I think you can have the best equipment and still dream about the next upgrade and not be able to do uh, that good so you need to give yourself uh, some kudos here because it's a beautiful image and it's because you know what you're doing oh thank you much appreciated but anyway, that that was like basically two months for me because the last session I didn't attend. So th that's me, and hopefully tomorrow I'll have some more data, maybe some, maybe also something in color. Nice one. Okay, cool. Yeah, unfortunately we are running a bit out of time. Um, so, but uh, there are only two, Iwan and me as left. So Iwan. Do you have something to share? I have a few, just a few, because okay. I've been fighting with... Uh, so both my cameras died in the same night. My QHY600 oh. and my Moravian died all at the same time, of course. Um, so uh, let me know if you guys see my finder. I just have the finder here. Yes. And I have a couple of images. Yes, we, we see it. Yeah. So I got... Can you see the, the previews? You can, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. So I've been playing with uh, my FSQ and the, the Moravia and the CCD, and I don't want to throw shade for the CMOS cameras, but I'm using my flats from the RC on a refractor and it flattens out pretty well, um, just because it's, it's such a different technology. So here's about uh, 10 hours of hydrogen and oxygen data. Um, 1200 second exposures with the FSQ 106, uh, SEM 40 EC mount, and uh, the Moravia uh, 16200. May I interrupt you? Uh, <laughs> half an hour integration, subframes? 20 minutes. 18, 20? 1800. 1800. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I, 1200, no, 1200 for this. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, and I've been playing around with different kind of processing, uh, mainly just doing different uh, luminance channels, some half oxygen, some half hydrogen with uh, SO, SHO. Um, so in a couple of days, this will be done. I think it's looking pretty cool. I, I don't like the, the Hubble palette for this. I like the hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen. Um, then I'm doing one of the most beautiful nebulas I, I can do, which is the Eagle. Um, this is only maybe two and a half hours of um, SHO, actually 20 minutes, or, no, 40 minutes of sulfur and about an hour of the other ones. I've, I've started to do it. Um, I'm really liking the field of view. The previous one I did only focused on the pillars of creation and was done on a high um, uh, focal length. Um, so the other one is I've been actually here. So one of the guys I've been talking to on uh, Instagram wanted to process some of my uh, Ritchie, Kretian data and the Moravian. So I gave him the Milot, um, and I also reprocessed it uh, using HOO. So I kind of kind of liking the way uh, hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen looks. Uh, this is again with the Rich Kretian 12 inch, half an hour of exposure, probably in this case, 20 hours of data um, at F6, I believe, reduced. So um, last image I'm gonna show, is I've been playing around with a, with a, a mosaic. 
it's two by one. So basically, uh, if you cut it in the middle, then that's a tile. This is again with the FSP 106 and the Moravian uh, 16200. This is the HOO version. I also have the SHO version. Um, my camera was actually broken in the middle of finishing this image. The power supply died. So I had to get it to a guy to solder it, uh, the Moravian one. But I want to give kudos to Moravian because they responded within like a day and they were willing to send me a board and everything. But mm -hmm. camera's back and working. And this is 60 hours of data, uh, 1,200 seconds each battle. And I want to shoot it in a wider angle, but at 500 and I think 500, 530 millimeters, I was really happy with, uh, with this. This is using three nanometer um, narrowband filters. So the stars are really uh, pushed back. And also the fluorite on the uh, scope does help with uh, very small stars. I think I get four or five micron stars. Um, so that's about it for me. My uh, QHY is coming back next week. I'll be uh, starting to shoot uh, quite a lot of targets with the Ritchie. Um, and I'm um, continuing to do the Eagle Nebula. So that's that's mostly it for me, guys. Uh, it's been a weird uh, couple of weeks. Wow, but cool to see this this uh, uh, mm -hmm. North American Nebula is just great. Okay. Yeah, great work. Yeah, really cool. So then let me just share my screen. Um, well, there's, to be honest, not so much to do. Maybe this one here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, just joking. Um, <laughs> I was uh, searching for, for some images. Uh, Are you saying you need a hobby to wait for your hobby to work? <laughs> something like this, yes. Um, some beers? I was able to capture this one here. This is... Um, also a galaxy, of course, uh, there are many galaxies. This is in the constellation Botus. I'm not sure is it pronounced this way. Botus, yeah, you know, um, it's no no galaxies anymore. And uh, but I just want to capture this one. Unfortunately, the stars are really not usable. This is just way too big. Um, but yeah, it's where the conditions. Yeah. What uh, telescope did you use? The 12 inch RC? That's, that's, that, the, uh... that's the RC, the, my GSO RC. Also, I think it's quite unfortunate that the uh, diffraction spike is just uh, cutting yeah. through the galaxy. It, normally, I like this 45 degree angle for the spikes, but in this case, it was not a good way to go. Yes, that's right. But uh, I can't just uh, turn the camera around that's remote and I don't have a rotator on it. So um, when I saw it, it was too late. Uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, it's a cool target. But I had, had to, I should have waited for better conditions because these stars here. Are, yeah, I I really like the middle galaxy, the spiral one, the, yeah. the blue one. That's uh, op seventy seven, I think. I'm not sure. This is of course one op, and this is also one. Uh, but I'm not sure what this is. Yeah, that's. That's great, but to be honest, this is the field of my 12-inch RC at 2,000 millimeter focal length. So this thing here is super small, honestly. And what camera are you using here? <laughs> That's the ASI 1600. So this is an LRGB of four hours. So it's highly oversampled with, uh, I think, 0.4 arc seconds per pixel. And you're you're probably imaging at almost like three thousand millimeters equivalent because such a small field of view on such a large scope, right? Yeah, um, I'm really literally thinking about changing the camera with a with a better pixel ratio because this is just a not usable uh, uh, magnification that I'm that I'm applying here. But you know, uh, big pixels in CMOS cameras are always expensive. So now I'm waiting for this crazy Moravian uh, new development. Maybe they have it for a good price. The uh, 4040 or the IMX 455? Which one? Uh, that would be the 4040, the G-Sense 4040. But yeah, yeah the then we, we are talking about a couple of thousand euros. So uh, yeah, just, just an idea. Maybe they look for a tester or somebody. And Yeah, Dr. Pavel, if you're watching, Thorsten wants one of those. 
<laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I'm always. I'm also can pick it up by myself. I just checked where Moravian sits, so <laughs> it would be possible. Um, so, but with the RC on the mount, I'm and no galaxies in reach or no, not the best uh, sky conditions. I also did this one here, an object of the SHO catalog uh, of the Sharpless catalog. I'm sorry. Um, I can only tell you that it's SH290, um, but I'm actually I'm not sure where it's located. Uh, so it should be an SHO image, but super difficult for me to, to get some uh, data into it because it's only 2.8 hours overall. Uh, that's just way not enough. I had to. So have you ever tried binning? I know that CMOS yeah. and binning is not yeah. synonymous, uh, but have you ever tried to do binning? Yeah, I tried this, but I just lost. I'm not sure what happened to my bin calibration frames. They were not oh. really working. So uh, I, I know I, I did it this last time. Yes, I, yeah, it's definitely an option because it's for me, it's really not usable to use it uh, with one by one. Uh, it's just yeah, oversampled. Um, just so uh, yeah, that's it from me. no no. Just a minute, I have one oh more to let to show. Wow. Um, this is also SHO object. SHO. Uh, no, why mm -hmm. I'm s saying this <laughs> all the time? I mean Sharpless from the Sharpless catalog. The object number eighty, a very small, but uh, yeah, a beautiful object. This is extremely bright in um, H alpha, and. Let me just check out. I also, no, I, I don't have this this photo at hand, unfortunately. I think I wanna I wanna congratulate you on your collimation here. Those stars look uh, admirable. Is, uh, yeah, okay. Coming the same telescope. To to hear yeah. this from you is an honor for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I, I look at them; they're perfect. And yeah, I, it's so hard to get these stars like this. Yeah, I, I have to do something more because there is astigmatism visible. Uh, I sh have to check it, but I decided for now, for the summer, I will switch to to this uh, 76 EDPH refractor, which is behind me, uh, to do uh, some summer objects again, also SHO. So the, then the RC is getting on the workbench and I can yeah, check everything out. But I will show you a, a better photo of this, which I found um, just by Googling just a moment, because this is a crazy object. If you have focal length and... Inch. If you have a 20 inch Vichy, maybe. <laughs> Even for us, at, at, at 12 inch, it's hard to limit. So this is from the Capella Observatory. Um, this is a remote observatory in Greece, but uh, controlled from German guys. And this is with, I think, 60 centimeter. Yeah, 60 centimeter hypergraph with nearly 5000 millimeter focal length. So this is a crazy <laughs> object. Uh, so for my one, uh, as you see, yeah, there's <laughs> room for improvement. But anyway, Pretty good. Um, yeah. Pretty good. yeah. But yours also I, I, looks very three dimensional. Sorry? Do you? Yours also look, uh, is looking very three dimensional. It's very good. And yeah. Like, uh, you can uh, see the depth. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cool. do, you, do you deconvolute a lot of your images? No, uh, this, this is just uh, stacked and, and stretched. Nothing. And, and ABE and automatic background extraction is done, I, I think. Uh, but nothing else, nothing else. Okay, so that's it. Let me just stop the screen share. So now I close the wrong browser window just a moment. Otherwise, I'm... <laughs> yeah, it's not that easy with too many displays. Okay, so <laughs> two hours two hours of talk super happy about it uh, i hope you liked it too also the viewers um if you have any comments or questions uh feel free to write us email comment here under the under the video uh, we are really appreciate that and we are trying to answer your questions and also um 
try to adopt something for the next streams, of course. Um, this we want to improve it all the time. And a very big thanks goes to Robert who attended us here and showed <laughs> some really, really cool photos. And wish you all the best and, and luck uh, for your astrophotography journey. Thank you. I, I have to thank you to invite me. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Great. So then I think I can wish you all out there a nice evening and uh, I hope to see you all in the next stream, which will happen in maybe four weeks, maybe some a bit earlier. We will also uh, yeah, advertise it on our social media channels. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you guys. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Yes. <laughs> if uh, when you uh, sorry, if you want, you can stay.